A dead name is the name generally given to you at birth. Removing it from your official documents and having your real name there, that's huge. That's the last big step. What if you couldn't vote as the person you truly are? MTV's Plus One The Vote logo and Trans Lifeline are giving grants to help trans youth update their IDs to be able to vote as their true selves. I'm Kim Petrus, and I'd like to introduce you to three grant recipients, Coral, Owen, and Aiden, who will tell us more about their ID journey. As soon as I have to show my ID there, I will track to the picture and then they'll look at me and then they'll look at the gender marker. It's a terrifying moment because I have no idea how someone will react to that. In terms of people misgendering you, it's like nobody's actually seeing you. It feels like you're walking around like a ghost. Going to the voting booth without an ID that matches your true identity is very uncomfortable. It's frustrating that other people in more socially accepted situations is marriage have a much easier time of changing their name than transgender people. Trans people will have to wait months, years, fill out all these forms, pay all these fees, and do all of this extra stuff that doesn't make any sense. The moment the grant money hit my account, it was just like jubilation. A feeling of euphoria, just knowing that somebody was there looking out for me. This is my first pride where I will be officially recognized as who I am. I was concerned that it wouldn't be a realistic possibility. I'm really grateful for Trans Lifeline. Having an ID is the first step to being able to use your voice and make that choice to make change. Voting is excruciatingly important. It's a real opportunity to express discontent with the current state of things. Please, please, please go out and vote. Trans people need to be heard. MTV's Plus One The Vote logo and Trans Lifeline are here to help people navigate this process so they too can vote as their true selves in the 2020 election. To make your voice heard this year, register to vote at translifeline.mtv.com. United State of Women team for inviting me to join you here today. My name is Vaughn Bagley and I am the Senior Manager for Social Impact at Viacom CBS's Entertainment and Youth Brands, which, which leads social impact campaigns and show integrations for nine networks, including MTV and Logo. I had the pleasure of working with the Trans Lifeline team, our animating partner, Studio Moros, our narrator, Kim Petrus, and our amazing grantees on the video that you just saw which was released at the end of June as part of our commitment to shining a light on LGBTQ plus voices and stories during Pride Month and beyond. Before I introduce you to our wonderful partners at Trans Lifeline to tell you more about their transformative work, I want to give you a bit of background on how we are prioritizing civic engagement this year. At Viacom CBS and more specifically at MTV, we have been committed to engaging young people and exercising their right to vote for decades with initiatives such as Choose or Lose and Rock the Vote. And in 2018, we launched the Plus One the Vote campaign to encourage potential first time voters to register and vote this November by making voting more social and fun, and most importantly, making voting easier by helping to increase access to the ballot box. While we continue to develop new programs that will launch this fall and take us through election day, we have already done this in a variety of ways. First, to make voting social and fun, our 2020 prompt challenge in partnership with former First Lady Michelle Obama's nonpartisan organization, When We All Vote, helped engage high school students in incorporating voter registration drives into the culture of their schools and find creative ways to register voters at their prompts. Due to COVID-19 though, limiting the ability for prompts to go forward, we threw MTV's Promathon, a virtual prom for the class of 2020 to help them celebrate their accomplishments while registering to vote and shining a bright light on the work of the 2020 Prom Challenge grantees and their success in collectively registering thousands of voters in their community. To improve access, we launched a polling place protection and expansion effort called Plus One The Polls in partnership with the Alliance for Youth Organizing, the Campus Vote Project, and the Students Learn Students Vote Coalition. 
to engage college students in placing and protecting polling places on their campuses to ensure that they can remain open this fall. This is even more important now that so many senior centers, nursing homes, and community facilities are no longer equipped to host an influx of people on or before election day. We hope that with the help of student leaders, college campuses will be able to step up and fill this gap. And we are also working to reduce the pressures on election day in two very important ways. First, through our partnership in Power the Polls, the first national effort to recruit a new generation of election workers, we plan to recruit 250,000 new young election workers to replace their grandparents at the ballot boxes. And second, through Vote Early Day, the first nonpartisan ownerless holiday dedicated to educating Americans about their early voting options, which this year will take place on Saturday, October 24th. And finally, we are committed to helping increase access to the voting booth for all Americans. And through our partnership with Trans Lifeline to develop a new youth microgrant program, we have been able to help over 250 trans youth, including one amazing grantee who you will hear from today, gain back their access to the ballot box by ensuring that they are able to vote in person on or before election day with an ID that reflects their true gender identity. An accurate ID can mean so much to trans youth and their families as it helps ensure that they can easily and safely participate in our democracy. And we couldn't have had a better partner in this effort than Trans Lifeline, whose team has worked at the forefront of supporting the trans community since they were founded in 2014. Trans Lifeline's executive director, who I now have the honor of introducing, was previously an ordained interfaith minister at the Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples, a historic civil rights church in San Francisco. She was a founding member of Speak Radical Women of Color Media Collective, and she has 15 years of experience as an organizer, educator, and performing artist. Please join me in welcoming our partner and friend and the executive director of Trans Lifeline, Reverend Elena Rose Barra. Thank you so much, Vaughn. It's wonderful to be here, and it's wonderful to get this chance to talk to you. I'm so grateful and excited to be part of the United State of Women this year. <clears throat> I'm Elena and I'm the executive director at Trans Lifeline. So I thought I'd tell you all a little bit about what we do. Trans Lifeline is the largest direct services provider for trans people in North America. Our peer support and crisis hotline is the only one of its kind. All of our operators are trans. So our callers know that they'll be able to talk to someone who understands some of what they're going through. We began with a nearly unprecedented policy of promising never to call the police on our callers without their explicit consent. A policy that helps keep our vulnerable community safe and helps them feel safe to call us sooner and more often. We offer our services in English and in Spanish. And in six years of operation, we've taken almost 100,000 calls from trans people in need of community care and support. Trans people have always made it through hard times by looking after each other. And we're growing that legacy into a network that spans a continent. We see mental and emotional health as a community concern, one that's greatly affected by the culture around us, by messages in the media, by the actions of our government, by whether or not people have the support and affirmation of loved ones or face isolation and rejection instead. And the data backs us up. These aren't just individual issues and they need more than individualized solutions. That's where we come in. Our work has shown us over and over that we do better when we take care of each other and when we're treated as though we matter as whole people. Trans Lifeline starts with a radical trust in trans people, that trans people know better than anyone what we need and what makes our lives worth living and what makes them harder. We know that trans people have extraordinary gifts to offer when we're given the chance to lead the way and we don't have to do it alone. We know that trans lives are worth caring for and lifting up and listening to. And when we listen, we realize that often our people are struggling because they're facing real struggles, struggles that aren't just about identity, but about the material conditions of our lives. We hear it from our callers every day. In a world that can be dehumanizing and demoralizing, Trans people deal with astronomical rates of discrimination, poverty, and violence. Who wouldn't struggle when some of the most powerful people in the world are working to erase you from public life and deny you equal protection under the law? 
when people all around you refuse to respect that you are who you say you are and deny you the resources you need to thrive, whether that's a home, a job, medical care, or even a homeless shelter. Every few months, some right-wing think tank funds another big media campaign to paint us as dangerous, predatory liars with the power to crush anyone who offends us and steal away your children. When most of us, we're just doing everything we can to get by. At Trans Lifeline, we see health not just as a community issue, but a material one. Sometimes the best thing you can do for someone's well-being is to change their circumstances for the better and to help them build lives they want more of. Trans people need so much more than visibility or affirmation. We need food and medicine and the chance to do safe and fulfilling work to make families and homes on our own terms with dignity. We need equal access to hope and the means to make that hope real. Nothing has a greater effect on our health than that. That's why for almost three years now, Trans Lifeline has joined emotional support with financial support through our micro grants program giving low barrier grants to trans people all across North America to help them pay for changing their names and legal genders and get identification documents from driver's licenses to passports that are true to who they are. Treating people as whole means offering holistic, comprehensive support. So our staff and volunteers guide our grantees through the complicated paperwork and processes to get IDs updated so that it isn't any harder than it has to be. And we offer specialized services to trans people behind bars in prisons and immigration detention centers where our people, especially trans people of color who are disproportionately criminalized, face everything we face on the outside and much more. Paperwork might seem kind of abstract, but having the wrong ID and legal status can make even everyday activities like going to the grocery store or opening a bank account potentially traumatic and dangerous. It exposes us to harms like being accused of identity theft or fraud just for claiming we are who we say we are. More than that, Correct ID can help trans people access housing, medical care, economic support services, and more. It can make a huge difference for trans people's ability to access the kinds of real resources that mean not just surviving, but thriving. It even affects our participation in civil society. Having the wrong ID can mean being denied the right to vote or participate in the census basic places where we're supposed to be able to have a voice in our government. Imagine showing up to the voting booth at the election this fall and pulling out your driver's license and being turned away because the officials don't believe you're you. Every day it seems like there's another law proposed or executive order put out trying to strip trans people of our basic right to live and breathe like anyone else and another politician running on the promise of getting rid of us. And those of us without the right ID don't even get to vote on it. And we're everywhere, from immigration to reproductive justice, healthcare to education, economic justice to police violence, trans people are part of the communities affected and part of the movements trying to make things better. These are our issues. This is our home. We need the chance to have a say in shaping this society and our future, to make the world that has a place for us and everyone who comes after us with policies and services that treat us as full human beings. Our voices need to be heard in order to make that better world real. So often the decisions about us are made without us based on conversations we don't even get to be a part of. Open up a newspaper or go online and you'll see lots of people are talking about trans people and at trans people without letting us speak for ourselves. That's why we're so proud to join with Logo and MTV's Plus One The Vote campaign to offer 20 grants a month specifically for trans youth who deserve their chance to be counted and lead the way in their own communities. And since 2017, we've given out more than half a million dollars to more than a thousand trans people in need. And thanks to support like MTVs, we're able to give out more grants than ever. This year, we adopted a policy to make sure that at least 75% of those grants go directly to trans people of color who are so often denied the support they need. Helping a trans person get their right legal ID and paperwork is a small way to make a big difference in our circumstances. A one-time intervention that can help us get through huge complicated systems and come out with better chances to make our best and bravest lives. I know that firsthand. Years ago when I transitioned, there was nothing like Trans Lifeline. I couldn't afford medical care or groceries and I was working hard just to keep a roof over my head. 
door after door slammed in my face once people got a look at my ID and saw it didn't match the person in front of them. So how was I supposed to be able to pay to get my name and legal gender changed? How was I going to navigate this bureaucratic system without any legal expertise? I got lucky. A local legal aid project offered to help me with the dizzying amount of paperwork. A local church helped me pay for the fees. And thanks to their help, I was able to get it done. And it made all the difference in my life. But it shouldn't have required good luck and knowing the right people in the right place. That help should be available to anyone who needs it. And today, I get to work with dedicated staff and volunteers every day to build that dream, to share the kind of help I got with hundreds of people who will never have to go through what I went through. Together, we get to work toward a future where trans people always have somewhere to turn and the resources they need and a chance to be heard. I wanna introduce you all to Coral Mercy Cruz, who's part of that future. Coral, who recently got a microgrant through our partnership with the Plus One the Vote Youth Microgrants campaign, is a musician and activist from New Orleans with dreams of a more just future, who's fought hard for a chance to make those dreams real. I think I speak for all of us when I say, we're so glad we got to help. Hi, Coral. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's absolutely a pleasure. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Of course, it's I... great to see you. Hello, everybody. I am Coral Mercy Cruz, and I am a trans woman from New Orleans, Louisiana. I came out as transgender about two and a half years ago, and let me tell you, it hasn't been the easiest road. Um, my day-to-day -day experience involves uh, work discrimination at work and uh, street harassment, and every time it's time to vote, uh, some hassle at the polls. You know, there's numerous roadblocks uh, trans people face when going to the polls be it their uh, identification not uh, being reflective of who they truly are, um, insensitivity from the poll takers. Um, and frankly, it's, it's often just a risk to leave the house as a trans person. Um, you know, when constantly looking behind your back to see if there's any threat or even just an inconvenience. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why uh, voting isn't necessarily incentivized for trans people, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, first off, the legal name change process is very costly and convoluted. Um, in New Orleans, it costs over $500 to legally change your name, which is frankly quite inaccessible for most trans people uh, who experience poverty at double the national average. And uh, a whole third of trans people have experienced homelessness at some point in their lives. Um, so, not all of us necessarily have the funds to uh, make that change possible, um, which is why it's so great that organizations like Trans Lifeline exist. Um, and like I said, it's a really convoluted process. You know, you have to uh, file at the clerk of court's office, get that notarized, bring it back, bring it to the district attorney's office. And if you're me, they lose your paperwork. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, lots of red tape. Um, it's, it's just not a streamlined process. It's not the most uh, humanistic process. Um, but there are organizations, uh, perhaps in your town, in New Orleans, we have Real Name Campaign who are doing excellent grassroots work to do away with uh, the fees and to help streamline this process. So um, it's more accessible for trans people. Um, you know, it's, it's just incredibly, affirming when your legal documents say that you are who you really are. Um, the psychological impact is huge for us. Um, and it comes with a lot of gender euphoria. So um, for mental health reasons, as, as well as uh, material reasons, it's incredibly important that uh, the ability to update your documents is possible. Um, at the voting booth, you know, there are like I said, numerous challenges. Uh, first and foremost, uh, photo ID laws, which, you know, um, not, not only just if you're a trans person presenting your ID and you're challenged on your identity, that's a huge problem. But uh, these laws are disproportionately enforced. Um, it, all minorities, uh, trans people, people of color, um, 
they get they get taken to task for their ID much more often than uh, say white Americans uh, who are cisgender. Um, and you know, often tra trans people are turned away at the polls, and this is tantamount to voter suppression. Um, you know, and these uh, people at the polling places, they don't necessarily interact with a lot of trans people in their day-to-day -day lives. They can be incredibly insensitive. I've gotten a lot of rude comments. I've gotten laughter. I've gotten triple takes, <laughs> me and my ID. And I'm, I'm just like, hey, that's, that's who I am, you know? <laughs> what, what, what really can you say? But um, I would also like to point out that incarceration of transgender people is double the national average. And if you have a felony, you can't vote. Um, I think it would be really great if we can restore felons rights to vote and uh, reform our prison system so that people that have committed nonviolent offenses will not have felonies on the records taking away their, their right to vote. Um, and of course, uh, you know, people of color as well as transgender people in general, particularly transgender people of color are disproportionately affected by um, the unfairness of our justice system and are often stripped of their right to vote for nonviolent offenses. Um, yeah, I think Trans Lifeline is a really incredible organization. They've helped me out significantly. Uh, you know, the micro grants are such a godsend in a lot of ways. Um, it made me feel like I could actually make that legal name change possible. It was, it seemed like such a hopeless endeavor before I found out about the program. But um, even just knowing about the program before I got the grant, I, I was just filled with, with hope. And that's, that's priceless. Um, like Elena said, they are given twice a month, uh, on the 1st and the 15th every month. Um, and 20 grants have been given to trans youth who experience homelessness at an extremely high rate uh, and are often disowned. Um, so it's great to, uh, it's great that the resources are there for particularly at risk populations. Um, and just as an organization, they're truly healing structural violence by distributing wealth to uh, impacted communities of the justice system of um, unequal access to work. Um, it's just truly tremendous to see. Uh, and they do offer services They have a crisis line, which I personally have had to use in the past. Um, some local pharmacy techs uh, made some pretty unkind jokes while refusing me my hormones. And I, it was really invaluable just knowing someone was on the other end of that line that at least kind of knew where I was coming from. You know, we had that in common. We, we faced similar struggles and it was just amazing having a kind, compassionate voice on the other end of the line. Um, you know, up to, up to 40% of transgender people have attempted suicide in their lives. So programs like this hotline are truly saving people. And I, I think it's wonderful. Um, it was really amazing to be part of the plus one, the ID campaign with uh, MTV and Logo. Um, you know, it's cisgender people have approached me and they said, they say, I, I never thought of it that way. I didn't know how difficult it was to update your documents. I never had to think about it. So it's really reaching not only transgender people, but cisgender people as well. They're reevaluating how they see transgender people in, in our struggles. Um, and it's, it's just truly raising awareness of, uh, you know, the issues transgender people face and, uh, of Trans Lifeline and their services. Um, and that kind of representation didn't exist when I was growing up. Uh, it's, I'm incredibly proud to be a positive face for transgender people when I didn't have anything like that growing up. Uh, you know, transgender people were 
a gag in Ace Ventura. You know, it's just really hurtful to see something like that. So <laughs> to be very visible and very present has been a truly humbling experience. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, uh, we need to actively reduce marginalization for trans people uh, at the polls and on the streets. And that can be done by, uh, you know, revising legal name change process, doing away with exorbitant fees, streamlining the process. So it's a little bit simpler and there's less red tape to navigate, uh, repealing photo ID laws that are discriminatory and often result in voter suppression. Um, and to just bring greater awareness to transgender people and our issues, uh, because that really does have a positive effect on how the, the world sees us. If we're perceived as human, we will, we will be treated as human. We, we have the same wants and desires as everyone else. And um, often a lot of the dehumanization comes from people not knowing a trans person in their daily life and coming with uh, some prejudices. So I think the representation is hugely important and leads to greater safety for trans people. Um, because trans people are integral to the fabric of our society. Like Elena said, they're at the front of every movement uh, since, you know, the gay rights movement, you know, it's, you know, Stonewall and uh, chances are you love a trans person and you want the best for them. And if you haven't had the privilege of getting to know one of us, I'll just let you know, we've been here since the dawn of mankind and we're not going away. So thank you so much. It's been wonderful to be part of this. Thank you, Coral. So much of what you've said is so familiar and relatable. And it's true that we have so far to go uh, to get to that, that world that we need to make, one where these unjust laws aren't on the books, one where everyone has a chance to be heard and equal access to, to the kinds of lives that any of us would hope for. And in the meantime, we're going to be here in the struggle on the ground every day. Trans people are vital to community, to our movements for equity and justice, to the whole human story. And we're not going anywhere. But we also know that in the face of the twin pandemics of COVID-19 and white supremacist violence, in the face of an organized movement of policy and propaganda trying to harm us until we disappear, that it's also not easy out there. These are times that ask us to be more than we have been, to grow our hearts and move to look after our neighbors, to see the ways our struggles for liberation are joined and to join together in that work. It's work that needs every one of us. The same people are targeting so many marginalized communities and all our hopes are bound up with each other. We win these fights together. We're seeing that today, every day in the streets. It's never been clearer how much we need each other. So I ask you all to show up for trans people and to remember that as Audre Lorde said, we do not live single issue lives. Racism is a trans issue. Abuse of immigrants is a trans issue. Poverty is a trans issue. Misogyny is a trans issue. Voter suppression is a trans issue. Homelessness and sex work are trans issues. Foreign and domestic policy, social justice and the justice system, inequities in healthcare, in economic access, in the right to vote, all of these are trans issues. And everywhere our people are, that is where our concern has to be. None of us is free until all of us are free. And so long as any of us is treated as expendable or disposable in the struggle for freedom, that will be used to break us apart and erode our solidarity and sink our movements. When we add our strength together, when we refuse to abandon each other, we can achieve extraordinary victories. The forces of patriarchy and white supremacy and fascism, they know it. So let's make sure we don't forget how powerful we are together. Get out there and vote and help those facing barriers to voting to get their, vo their chance to be heard too. We all deserve the chance to write the story of our future and we only get there together. Voting is one way we can exercise our power. And also it will take so much more than voting to make the world we're hoping for together. Find a mutual aid network, join a demonstration, support the leaders and teachers and organizers whose expertise and brilliance make a braver future possible. There is a place for every one of us and our gifts in this work. There is a place for you. 
And if you'd like to learn more about Trans Lifeline and what we do, check out our website at translifeline.org or find us on social media under the handle Trans Lifeline. We're always excited for more support and more volunteers if you can help. And we're always happy to help if you need us. So please reach out if you or someone you love needs another trans person to talk to or financial support or any of the services we provide. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for having us to, to Vaughn, to the United State of Women team, to Coral, all of you for showing up. And may we help each other to be brave in this world that asks us for so much courage. May we keep showing up for each other. Take care, everyone. <laughs>